Hey buddies, I hope you can hear me because I'm trying to keep my voice down because I don't know, it might be 1130, I don't know, maybe midnight. The cuckoo clock is behind me. <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to keep my voice down because my niece has to get up super early. But as you can see, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> I've got a puzzle going on back there. Um, that's the third one that I've, I've done two already in the last two weeks and um, they're just something my niece has and she's let me do I'm trying to watch less TV and do stuff with my hands to eat less and the next little project I'm working on is I think I did a video about these little treasure ties they're, uh, wait treasure treasury tax treasury tax um I never heard of them until a tiktoker was talking about them her name is Laurie and uh, her TikTok handle is Laurie Alice Adventures. And her middle name Alice is spelled A-L-Y-C-E. So it's Laurie Alice Adventures. She's a teacher in Devon. And I think she just, she's a department head now, I think. And she's in uh, Plymouth. And as you know, Plymouth is a favorite place of mine. Um, I've been there a few times. Once I found out that my, I think, eight times grandfather, great-grandfather, um, once I found uh, that our genealogy pretty much came from Plymouth. This is St. Andrews in Plymouth. So I, it was just a fluke that I found out she was from there. Anyway, I'm trying not to ramble and get off track. But she did a TikTok once um, a couple years, maybe a year and a half ago, where uh, when she was teaching younger students where she was using treasury tags to have them keep all their papers together and I was just really entranced by it because these little kids were threading these elastic tags with the grommets um not grommets I'm sorry I can't remember what you call these things they're like the things on the end of a shoelace oh I know there's a word for it I can't remember it but I was really impressed that these little kids were threading um, these treasury tags through punched holes in their paperwork, their drawings, uh, their school papers and everything to keep it all together. And these come in all sizes. They come in this big and then they come in that long. So I thought that would be a really cool way to keep my um, just all kinds of stuff together. Like recently I've used them to put together a lot of correspondence that I've had like uh postcards and letters and mail that I've had from over the years and it worked really well and I've had this box in uh st stored away and whenever I came home from a trip I just threw all my travel things into this box and I thought why don't I use these treasury tags to sort it organize it and uh keep it all together and uh it looks like a mess but this box was organized and it you can you can tell uh, my favorite destinations by the stack. Now, I've been to Greece twice and I oh loved it so much. Notice I omitted the word absolutely. I'm trying to stop saying absolutely so much. Um, I went through there and I pulled out all the stuff from Greece and I found these envelopes from a uh, uh, tour company in Athens that put together a trip for me and two girls where we went to uh, Thera, Mykonos, Mykonos, Mykonos. Anyway, we went to a couple islands and I was, I sorted it all by date. And then on the envelopes, I saw the date and the location and I put behind the envelope, what is the word? Is it ephemera or ephemera? All the, the receipts and tickets and stuff that went along with that envelope. Like, uh, you know, here's Athens. So here's the Acropolis house. I've stayed there both times. I love it. It's in uh, the suburb Kaplaka. And then here's a map of Athens. And here is my ticket for the National Museum. And then here's the brochure for the National Museum. So I was able to sort everything. And this is my favorite. Uh, on the island of Mykonos, we rented, I'm sorry, Santorini, also known as Thera. We rented these four wheelers to wheel around the place on. And they called them sows, but um, you see, I paid thirty-two dollars to rent that for three days. For three days, we had those for thirty-two dollars. No, I'm sorry, thirty-two euro, der. So, anyway, um, 
funny thing when we rented these um they just gave us the keys and said go and we're like don't you want us to pay for them and the guy said you're on an island where are you going to take them so in other words you know we couldn't steal them so <laughs> he knew we were going to come back and pay for them um well long story short i'm loving these treasury tags because i was able to sort um my grease i'm going to move this over to and something else so i was able to get it all organized so that's done and you know there's a very thick pile here i still need to sort this because this is like brussels sweden norway denmark amsterdam germany I, I need to sort that better this is italy i absolutely oh there it is i absolutely loved italy but you know i don't have a lot of stuff from there so i may just put all those in an envelope but but we know where i like to travel the most don't we <laughs> we know what this pile is <laughs> this is this is london or england or the uk uh, i do need to organize this better because there's like uh london Salisbury, Plymouth, but once I unfold a lot of the stuff and the punch holes, it'll, it'll be much shorter to put in there. I'm just, I'm just really liking these. So, you know, if you want to organize some papers, some Christmas cards, uh, even maybe photos, everybody, I know I do. I keep, I keep paring it down, paring it down, paring it down, but I've got photo collection where when you go to buy your pictures, you, you have all of them. And, you know, you give out as much as you can, but then you always have those left over. Uh, so, I need, maybe I can just start punching holes in those big 8 by 10s <laughs> and put treasury tags in them. Uh, when, when I was sorting through everything, I came across something. I have two of these books that I got from the Church of St. Andrew. This is uh, the church that when I was in uh, Plymouth and I went to the records office, um, I had pre-arranged with them to have copies of some baptismal and well christening records of not my eight times great grandfather but his brother it's a lateral relative and um so i was able to uh i was i was amazed it was it was uh, every time i traveled every trip i've ever taken every time i traveled i always thought you know i i just want to put my hands on something or be in a building that a relative was in or was married in or worked in or went to church in you know I just want to put my hands on something that I came and I, I never could I never could and when I found this ancestor that was from Plymouth I'm like I have to go let's just go and I went to the records office and they said here's a christening record they were christened at St. Andrews I'm like that's great thank you so much and I paid them for the record I think it was like two pound or something like that and um, they said, so are you going to go to St. Andrews? And I said, ah, maybe one day, you know, maybe on my next trip. And uh, he kind of looked baffled. He goes, you know, it's just down the street. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> so, so I went down the street to St. Andrews and had an amazing experience. Lovely, lovely people in there. If you want to go down the wormhole, Google St. Andrews in Plymouth, England. Um it's just a wonderful story. My favorite being uh, the baptismal font, which I stood next to and I ran my hands all over that smooth marble. Just beautiful. And this is the wood cover to it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful story. And uh, my family's ancestors was christened in this exact baptismal font, this one. And when she told me that, I said, no, there's no way. I mean, th there's no way that is from 1661 because... You know the history there. Even it even says right here, uh, the one before this was destroyed in the. Oh, sorry, my big hand was destroyed in the Civil War. Well, you know, not that Civil War, that Europe's European Civil War, and uh, and then again, you know, you're talking about the Blitz, the Blitz, the Blitz destroyed this church. This is this is the same church. Look, there's no roof, and for a long time they called it the Garden Truth uh, Church. And, uh, you know, rain was coming in forever. And after the Second World War, Queen Elizabeth visited and she said, rebuild this church. And they did. And when they were putting everything back and getting everything back in order, it was time to get a baptismal font. And the one that had been there was one that had replaced this one. 
and it was for the Victorian era. And so it was very ornate and all that. And it was destroyed in the Blitz. So somebody's like, oh, well, you know, th the original one's down the street. They're using it as a birdbath. <laughs> <laughs> somebody's yard. So this is the actual one that our ancestors was christened in. Uh, long, super long, super way too long story short. You know, I've gone over this so many times. You, here's another copy of it. You can see how um, just ratty, catty it is from going through it. But my bad habit is I get these things when I'm traveling and I tend to, to go home and then uh, get my trusty magnifying glass and go over all the maps and everything I saw and relive everything, get a closer look at everything. But then I, I forget and I, I get the whole stack and I come home and I throw it in the, the box of stuff. So going through this stuff, I found something I'm just kicking myself over. I'm so mad at myself. I don't even remember. Don't even remember, but I must have. It's here. I bought, a, here's a little packet it came through. I bought a packet of postcards. Some must, oh, it must have been at that antique shop that I bought the bracelet at. I have a bracelet and a ring I bought on the Barbican, 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 the Barbican, Barbican, I can't say it, in Plymouth. I must have got it there, but they're old postcards and... You know, there's St. Andrews. Some of them are used. I've had these all this time. All this time. I could have checked. Look, 1967. I could have checked these dates. I could have looked at on Google Earth and looked at these addresses and been the creeper that I am. I could have researched so much, looked into these people's family's trees. I've had these all this time. I'm trying to remember when the last time was I went to Plymouth. Um, must have been when I was fleeing Hurricane Harvey. Maybe, maybe it was 2018. I don't know. But look at this one. <laughs> so cool. And I was there. Good luck from Plymouth. <laughs> it's a black cat. <laughs> this is another one. Let's see if we can see the date on it. May. Mm. I can't see the... Uh, 1960? Not sure. I have to get a better look. I'm sorry. I hope I'm not making anybody... Seasick, but look, they send it to Birmingham. So, this is a whole lot of talk about nothing. Let's see what this says. I'm trying to be still to not make anybody. It says something. Let's see. I'm getting a light. The Kathleen and May Plymouth. I'm sorry, can't read it. I'm trying. Look at this, the Lido. That was down near the Barbican also. I walked up around that lighthouse up there. Behind there is like some sort of barracks. Let's see. What does this say? Get it off. It's boring, y'all. I can't read it. I gotta get out my dad's magnifying glass and get a better look. That might be Plymouth uh, St. Andrews. No, it's not. It says the Lady Chapel Buckfast Abbey. Buckfast Abbey. Anyway, I'm gonna have a really good time going down. The Rabbit Hole, 1974, and this one to Newton Abbott in Devon. Came out walking in the car, in the dock. Michael wanted to come up to bed, but I don't know. So, this is my hot Friday night. I can't believe I'm still awake. We had rain here in Mont Bellevue, Texas. It was a nice soaking. It wasn't torrential downpour. It was less than that, but more than a sprinkle 
all day, off and on all day. The ground got a good soaking. I'm going to do another video this weekend to show the backyard. Everybody's grass is brown and dead. And a lot of people have plumbing issues because the ground is so dry. The, uh, the ground is shifting and cracking the plumbing. My backyard is so dry that um, part of the sidewalk sank a good two inches. And uh, I had to put... Um, I have two big pieces of uh, tile, leftover tile, and, I, and they're long, and I set them side by side so that uh, my sister can get, get from over that lip from where the sidewalk sank to get over that lip in her wheelchair, and we need to do it to another part of the sidewalk. Uh, so that sank. I'm just thank God that we have no plumbing issues, no foundation I issues. Thank God. But the backyard is brown. Everybody's yard is brown. But uh, with the rain, uh, the part of the grass that's under the shade of the tree is pretty and green. Since it rained today, it looks green. It sprinkled a little bit two days ago. Uh, maybe that's what helped it. But it's so dead. You can see the outline of where um, the pipelines under the ground, whatever they are, they may not be in use anymore. Who knows? But whatever the material of the pipe is, maybe it's rust, it it's goes up through the ground, it's made the grass dead. And you can trace the outline, you can see it, you'll see in my next video that I do. It even makes perfect right angles in the grass and then goes all the way to the back and up the back fence. But it, it's been there for, it's been like that for years where you can see all the underground pipes. It's not my water, it's not my plumbing. I don't, it might be no longer in use or it might be something with all the chemical plants around here who knows who knows but it's friday night september 15th i have a big day tomorrow i'm going to do stuff with my bestie and uh right before i started filming this i saw that i had some text messages from my world's best cousin in the whole world and i did not know i had those because i fell asleep in the recliner so sorry cuz I'm going to upload this and then start texting him and maybe wake him up. <laughs> Happy weekend, y'all.